Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Rahman Rahim, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri, Minkum. And a reminder for myself, An abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. A reminder for myself that alhamdulillah, to alhamdulillah that Allah's ni'mat and, and bounty. Subhanahu man huwa alimul hakeem fi barakati Surat al Kahf and the holy month of Safar that Allah asked us to be dressed by the oceans of Hayba and majestic lights, to be dressed by knowledges and wisdom. And the month in which to enter into the cave, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and they've been describing for us this year to enter into that cave. That cave, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and the description of its protection in this month for the awrad to recite Surat Al-Feel seven times every day and then describing that the story of Surat Al-Feel, Surah 105 is not only about an elephant and a dictator mounting an army, Abrar mounting an army of elephants to destroy the Kaaba. And he had a cathedral that he had built and he wanted the worshipness and the attention and the migration of people to his place of worship and something other than Allah And they reminded us that the elephant is a sign of arrogance, the party of the elephant, Ashab al fil <laughs> the party of the elephant, watch out for them. Ashab al donkey are at least something different because the donkey is a humble creature. And the Prophet rode on donkey, Sayyidina Isa rode on donkey. So it is from beginning of time, end of time Allah is reminding, watch out for these Ashab al feel Their agenda, their understanding, wanting to destroy the Kaaba and bring their Qibla and their house of worship to be superior means the dunya. They don't want the deen and the religion of the heavens, they want from the dunya and they want everybody to be worshipping what they want to worship. And Allah reminded every moment Qur'an is alive right now for us to live by that the heart and the Kaaba is under attack and this Ashab al feel are coming. And their whole interest is to destroy your faith with their TV, with their games, with their videos, with their Snapchat and TikTok and whatever else you want to do. It is geared toward destroying your Kaaba. Their movies, their food, their everything is abrar and coming to take faith away from insan. So living Qur'an is teaching for us that make your heart a Kaaba otherwise you stand no chance in front of this shaitan. If you are by yourself hoping you're going to defeat this elephant and this army and all its might, oh you'll be trampled upon in a second. But Allah give the believers hope that as I defended the Kaaba and that's bricks and stones but that which I created with my two hands and I blew into it from my spirit, walaka karana bani adam you have a, a high position and reality in Divine the Presence, make your heart my home. Qalb al mu'min baytullah and for your heart to be Allah's home 
it has to have Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin and Allah said, that's the best of company. If you love Nabiyeen but you're not good with Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, Allah's not with you. You get four categories. In your life don't just say you love one not the other, something is deficient in your love. Look to your heart. Allah says, I show you the sign on the horizon then I show you within yourself. So this horizon is look to the Kaaba, there's four corners. Each corner is representing a reality, black stone is Nabi'een. The corner that keeps breaking because of the birth of Imam Ali Salam and the Wahhabi keep hiding it, he was born inside and the Kaaba cracks every 13th of Rajab and they paint it and cover it, is representing Siddiqeen. The other corner, shuhada and the one closest in the beginning of your tawaf is Salihin. And Allah say, your heart is a Kaaba. And you have four valves and each valve has to have the love of one of these for your heart to be kamil and complete in its muhabbat. You can't love Sahabi and not Ahlul Bayt and you can't love Ahlul Bayt and not Sahabi because these are Siddiqeen. Shuhada you must be accompanying those whom are mushahada. Not the shuhada who died in a battlefield, you can't co accompany them. So who are these then shuhada? What they used to call the ulama, big mushahada. This is a big alim, means he's, he was like a warrior in his faith. He reached the state of death before death. So the real alims, when they would describe them as warriors, mushahada, that these are the big martyrs in religion that they fought against themselves, they fought against their bad characteristics which is the fiercest fight. And as a result Allah Allah granted them a knowledge and they are shuhada. Don't think this one nothing but very much alive in his reality. His taqwa is high level of taqwa in which Allah teaches him. So the heart has to have, everyone knows in their tafakkur, you with shuhada, you, you know people who are shuhada and that they, they teach from a level that's not seen. Because in the majlis of shuhada many became salihin just by the words of what they're sending. The light of their words from the heart of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad immediately dresses everybody to be Salihin. Whoever hears it is dressed by it. You heard this, Burda Sharif? You're talking about Muhammadan representatives. Anything they teach you about the reality of Prophet is a reflection of their mirror. They don't teach you about themselves, they teach you about their master. They say, you see my master, if you mention his name what light comes to you, what dressing and blessing comes to you, what difficulties will be washed away and annihilated from you, well my master is reflecting through me onto you. So then you must have shuhada in your association. Those shuhada make everybody salihin by the light that emanate from their heart, from the light that emanate from their face, their ears, their eyes, their breath. And the of Allah give them lisan al-haqq al-aliyah, says, whom we give wisdom has been granted Allah's greatest gift. So it means it's a gift bearer from Allah that he's inheriting from the tongue most high. That and those they're Kaabas because their four valves ignited. Allah make their heart to be Kaaba. As a result Allah sending and teaching any abra coming for you, don't worry leave to me. 
If you thought the Arbabi was scary, heavens are much scarier. If you think Arbabi were scary and frightening, all those angels, avenging angels, angels of war, they say they're huge in size. The angels of Jahannam that come to guard only Allah, that they have Sayyidina Malik who guards them. And above them is an immense dragon. And from Sayyidina Malik come all his zabanis that they merely make intention to harm whom Allah loves and Allah begin to give an order to Sayyidina Malik, release your zabanis. And the fire of Jahannam can enter onto earth and burn everything in its path. Allah say, what well, you have to fear then? You only have to fear if your heart is not of that nature and not reaching to that reality. And a reminder for tonight because we all have the same Qur'an but apparently they're reading something different. And the uloom of awliyaullah from the moon not from the earth, from this maqam al-fardani, from the station in which the orbiting of the reality of the moon that takes from the shams, it's not an earthly understanding, it's heavenly understanding. So Allah then heavenly understanding that every time you see Ayatul Kareem that talk about Holy Kaaba, it's about your heart. So when you're reading Ayatul Kareem of Qur'an, say, Ya Rabbi that we're being trained in this cave and at this level of understanding that my heart has to become a Kaaba, then what Allah gives in order of Qur'an that, get my house, clean my house. So when people are not understanding it and say, where is meditation in Qur'an? <laughs> Where's anything from anyone's understanding? Eh? The whole of everything is in Holy Qur'an. But they have eyes and they don't see and they have ears and they don't hear. Any verse of Holy Qur'an that deals with Holy Kaaba it has a reflection in our reality. And when the Holy verse of Qur'an is asking from us that, to take my house of worship Wash my Kaaba. This maqam of washing your Kaaba is what? You can't make tawaf around something disgusting and dirty. Why the washing first? Mean zaki, tasawwuf, clean it. Take a path of tasawwuf, take a path of zaki and cleaning. Take a path in which to clean and when you clean the physical you begin to recognize the more important cleaning is clean the spiritual. So then how are you going to clean your heart? You're going to make tafakkur. You're going to make your muraqabah and contemplation that, Ya Rabbi I want my heart to be your home. And then Allah's first order, clean your heart, clean your house, clean my house. Clean the Kaaba. As soon as they begin to understand, then Allah want them to make tafakkur, make a contemplation. What's in your heart? All these idols that you have put into your home, into your heart. Your idol is your fashion, your 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 looks, your money, your car, your jobs. That which you make tawaf around is what you worship, right? What is tawaf? Tawaf is your direction of your focus. If anyone made tawaf around holy Kaaba it's hard to think of anything else because you're tired and you just keep moving around. You keep moving around and Allah is giving you a symbolism that when you're busy in my worshipness it shows your focus. So that which you're making tawaf around is a reflection of what is really within your heart and the focus of your heart. 
Somebody all day, lay, all day long washing their car, washing their car, brand new car, wash the car, wash the car, they have collections of cars. They're making tawaf around that and that's really what's in their heart. All day long taking photos of fashion and beauty, fashion, fashion, fashion. Now everything based on face and Instagram, all of these Allah is showing that is a tawaf. They're making tawaf around themselves and, and their job and whatever you're focusing on excessively you are making tawaf around it because your mind is wrapped around it. The expression they have, my mind is wrapped around it because you're making tawaf around it. So when Allah is giving this understanding for us that if you want the house, you want your heart to be my house, clean it. How are you going to clean if you don't know what's inside of it? It's obvious then you have to make your tafakkur, you have to sit every night and look into your heart, what's in my heart Ya Rabbi? What did I do today? How was I angry today? How was I jealous today? How was I commenting and expressing and how was I doing everything wrong? Find all the wrong and take an inventory of what's in your heart. What is it that I focus on? What is it that I'm fearful of? What is it that I'm occupied and preoccupied with? That's then what's inside your heart and those are the idols and that's why Prophet spent time destroying them. 360 idols were in Mecca and you have 360 points. When people say, oh, where do you get these points and these numbers and it's throughout Islamic history. Why was there 360 idols? Because everyone has a point on their body, 360 points on the circle and there's an idol for each point. And these idols all have to be destroyed so that you can worship Rabbiul A'la. Because you're not worshipping Allah you're worshipping your desires. We're all falling prey to our desires. So muhasaba, muraqaba, tafakkur. Anyone ask you, say, oh these are the ayahs of Allah asking of Holy Qur'an from Kaaba. When Allah says, take my house and clean it, well He needs you to go to Mecca and clean the Kaaba? You have your own Mecca. You have your own place where Allah should be residing and it should be cleaned. And Allah said, I created no man with two hearts. It's not going to be me and, and your, your other desires, that one has to go so that I fully can come into your heart. And that's the verses of cleaning. When they begin to take a life of zaki and cleaning, tasawwuf means to clean. I'm on a path to clean the Kaaba and the Kaaba of my chest, the house of Allah that resides within me, my life is to clean it. And when I clean it, I meditate and muhasaba and I take an accounting of it. And as a result my whole life is in a tawaf, now I understand what I'm making of tawaf. An abrar and ashab al-feel right now what they're doing? They're making you to have fear. Iman and Ahlul Iman out of the population is 1% maybe. 99% Allah then teach and Prophet order, teach them the reality of fear. Because Iman may be a hard station for somebody to achieve but that which you fear is governing you. That which you fear is controlling you, it's your faith. Your faith became fear. For everything you fear it's controlling you. Go in, you go in, come out, you come out, go in, go in, you're gonna die. Oh, you're gonna die. I'm gonna die, you're gonna die. Give me something, give me something so that I don't die. That's controlling you. That became your faith. When Allah teaches, no, if they want to have fear, they should fear me. If you want to fear, 
Fear Allah Don't fear Abrar and his Ashab al Feel. Fear Allah And the believer put their trust in Allah and they have nothing to fear but Allah Then they begin to understand, okay this, this dunya now trying to make me to have fear and go that direction and Ahlul Iman are coming and teaching, no, no, no come, come, come to Prophet come to Allah Bring this reality of Allah into our hearts and make our heart to be the Holy Kaaba in which Allah reside. And then how to bring and how to illuminate the heart is by salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad because when you begin to praise upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that nur of Muhammad begin to enter into your heart. Shahidan, Mubashiran wa Nadiran, the light of Prophet illuminates your Kaaba, gives honour and, and prestige to your heart. As it gave an honour to the Kaaba in Mecca, the honour of the Kaaba in Mecca is the presence and ruhaniyat of Sayyidina Muhammad Rabbul Bayt, the Lord of that house. So who's the Lord of our house? We're trying to bring Allah's attention to the house. Allah says, bring your mo my most important guest into your heart. My most important guest is Sayyidina Muhammad means then you see these naat and see these salawats that it came into my heart and illuminated every corner and recess of my heart became filled with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and then the light of Prophet begins to fight into the heart, destroy every idol within the heart, destroy everything other than the worshipness of Allah just from mim ha, mim dal, mim ha the reality of al-mahi comes. The Prophet says, mahi al-dunub, muhi al qulub that every salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad when the nur of Prophet enter into the heart just the mimha Sifat al-Mahi comes and begin to obliterate everything into the heart. And the light of Prophet is a fire from paradise. And how paradise works we described before is that this fire comes and annihilates everything. And it's Haris alaykum bin mu'mineen wa huwa raufun raheem. Means that the light of Prophet comes as a light that destroys and puts fear into every shaitan. So everything that is occupying and around us, this light. And the duality of understanding this light of Prophet comes as a fire for all the wrong people. As it comes it burns the shaitans. That's why when they come to the majlis of zikr they run out in two minutes. You see they can't even sit for a second. And that other madhab they don't even want to hear salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad why? Because Sifat al-Muntaqeem is coming. That the, the mahi al dunub is coming, that fire of Prophet enters in and it gives a bliss and tranquility for the believer. First level they're burning because things are being clean, higher levels they're in a hall because it's a light from paradise, it's a light of haqq and that's what Allah describing, qul jal haqq. That the haqq of Prophet's light is the most highest haqq that you could ever understand. That when the haqq comes, it's, it's fierce against every falsehood. Jahuka was not jahuka, obliterated. Means that nothing can stand in the presence of the light of Prophet. It's completely obliterated. But at the same time, the believer enters into a hall. Because they love the lights of zikr, they love the salawats on Prophet 
And that's the heart that becomes filled with the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad until you become a receptacle of that light. You took from it, you took from it, you drank from it, you became a saqi of it. That once you had so much of that light Allah then ordered you to dispense the light. And you became one whom dispenses the light of this love of Sayyidina Muhammad which is Haris alaykum bil mu'mineen huwa ra'oof wa rahim. It's beatific to the believers, it's a peace and tranquility to believers but it's extremely harsh against shayateen. They cannot take or stand that light. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding from Ayat al Kareem and Holy Qur'an that the, the heart and the Kaaba that Allah is most interested in is the heart of the believer. For the heart of the believer is that which Allah made with Divinely hands and what that represents and blew from His Divinely Spirit within the soul and the nafs of insan. وَلَكَرْ قَرَامْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ Allah put much more value for insan than bricks and stones. And we pray that Allah open our hearts to receive those lights Amen. and that the love and nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad to avenge these lights Amen. that push devils away from us and let your beautific grace enter within our being. Subhana rabbika rabba izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basi Rasulit al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.